Good day, Grade 8 Learners! This is Teacher Myra. Welcome to another awesome episode of Cien Saya! Because learning science is not just amazing, it is fun! Today, we are going to focus our lesson on one of the frequent visitors of our country, which is the typhoon, or locally, we call them bagyo. But first, here are the objectives that you need to master. Before we dive into our lesson, let's play a game. You need to unscramble the letters and guess the word. Very good! Very good. Good job. Wind, storm, thunder are common terms we relate to typhoons. Tropical cyclone is the general term used to refer to a rapidly rotating storm system formed in the tropical regions of the world. It has different names depending on where the storm is formed. Hurricane when it is formed at the North Atlantic Ocean. Typhoon is the name used when the storm is formed in the Western Pacific Basin. Across Australia and Indian Ocean region, they are referred to as cyclones. These storms are all effectively large-scale storm systems which either spin in counterclockwise direction in the northern hemisphere or clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. Let's get to know more about the tropical cyclones. Typhoon starts from the evaporation of water molecules from the ocean. Because this moist air is warm, they travel upwards until they meet with cold air. At this point, they start to condense and form clouds resulting into rain showers. The clouds dissipate and vanish after precipitation is completed. With a very active system, clouds can group together in large clusters of thunderstorm. These clusters of clouds are areas of low pressure in the atmosphere. When combined with warm water over 26 degrees Celsius, they are the key in transforming ordinary clouds into deadly typhoons. Converging winds also help in the movement of warm moist air in the ocean upwards and contribute to the circulation of the typhoon. With an organized circulation, the low pressure becomes a tropical depression. As it drips, it may encounter areas in the ocean where it is exceptionally warm, which will further drive and increase its circulation, transforming it into a typhoon. And when the conditions are ideal, the system will start to rotate even faster and faster, forming the center, which is the eye of the typhoon. Concept check! What are the four conditions for typhoons to develop? Good job! This time, let's learn about the tropical cyclone categories. Tropical depression has a maximum sustained wind of 61 kilometers per hour. Tropical storm has a maximum sustained wind of 62 to 88 kilometers per hour. Severe tropical storm has a maximum sustained wind of reaching 89 to 117 kilometers per hour. Typhoon, on the other hand, has 118 to 220 kilometers per hour. While super typhoon has a maximum sustained wind of reaching more than 220 kilometers per hour. Let's try answering this. 
If a certain tropical cyclone has a maximum sustained wind of 82 km per hour, what category does it belong? Is correct. Tropical cyclone Haiyan has a maximum sustained wind of 230 kilometers per hour. What is its classification? Good job! Let's find out what's inside a tropical cyclone. Let us now take a peek inside a tropical cyclone. The lowest wind speed and air pressure is located at the eye of a tropical cyclone. In fact, all tropical cyclones have low air pressure at the center. This is the reason why air in the surroundings moves towards the eye. Next is the eye wall. It is comprised of dense clouds surrounding the eye. The highest wind speed can be found at the eye wall. So when Pag-asa reports say that a tropical cyclone has sustained winds of 200 km per hour for instance, this is referring to the winds at the eye wall. The Philippine Archipelago is situated with waters of the Pacific Ocean and China Sea. Due to its geographical location astride the Pacific Typhoon Belt, Cyclonic storms, floods have been the principal natural hazard in the Philippines. The densely populated island of Luzon and Visayas are mostly and adversely affected by typhoons. In the track of these typhoons, public buildings, ships, communication lines, roads and bridges are either destroyed or damaged and agriculture is severely disrupted. Cyclones, hurricanes, and typhoons are not at all bad. They have global impact, moving hot excess energy out of the tropical latitude to attain balance and equilibrium, and transferring energy from the equator to the colder parts of the Earth. And that wraps up our lesson for today. See you again next time. This is Teacher Myra. Always remember, science is not just amazing. It must be fun. See you in Saya.